So I hope that you uh, liked the last video. The idea was to see some kind of a continuity. I am very happy to see it has been two months or so or three months or two months or one month in different countries of lockdown and there is growing awareness of mental health and cognition that uh, alerts people to take care of their uh, uh, minds uh, more than their bodies. You can boost your immune system by but, uh, mind. So the skills that I was uh, talking about in the last videos that you saw were uh, indirectly, uh, you know, influencing your cognition or more directly even if you practice uh, in a constructed goal-directed manner. Wow. After uh, listening to all this you may be wondering why there is so much of emphasis <clears throat> on attention. Why do we need attention? Uh, you have to go back to the question of its evolution. I, I think in one of the previous uh, talks I have uh, briefly indicated uh, about its evolution. One of its main purpose of uh, being evolved in our species and most other species is to allow us to filter out information that we don't need because that's pretty important for our survival or to focus attention on things that we need alternatively. Attention is also a link to consciousness and there are lots of books and ideas related to that and why we have to refer to consciousness when we are talking about attention. Uh, uh, because, uh, as I have said even before, that if I attend to something very deeply, then I become more conscious of it. I, be I become more knowledgeable about it. And uh, it's important in this context because all these skills that I have indicated, they can boost this uh, to some extent. Attention is is more is more experienced in our daily behavior than as a concept. It's not the attending behavior is attention itself. So attention is what attention does. Therefore, what you do, take the skills that I have shown you, would then start uh, boosting your attention. The skills that uh, I have uh, uh, put there. Uh, are of various types. Let's let's focus on uh, let's focus on meditation first. What meditation exactly does? Coming to the point, there are many types of meditation: uh, mindfulness, uh, vipassana, um, and many versions of them. I, uh, I can't get into them, but studies show that if you practice some of them, then they affect different components of attention. For example, fo some some types of practice they influence the focused attention network. Some practice they influence the um, ability to monitor conflict because you can filter out conflict and some some practices they influence uh, the default mode network of the brain which is a transient um, network of the brain as, as the brain is when you are not doing anything um, so some others uh, claim that um, uh, meditation can improve your more internal attention so that you can focus on your own mood and well-beingness more and some others they want uh, to uh, push it outside towards the world because so they are contradictory views I mean it can be a bit of a narcissism if I say that I don't want to mind uh, the world and I just want to focus it on myself but that's not how we have evolved even so I would like to differ with some of the views but So science, the brain imaging uh, uh, studies that show activation in the frontal areas, in, uh, in the conflict monitoring areas, uh, in uh, people who have been practicing for some time now. So it's it's not uh, the novices. So you have to uh, practice it for some time to show these effects. Exercises. Uh, human beings, uh, since their evolution, have been running, walking. And now we have not been doing those things much. Uh, whether you put it on the internet or uh, put it on the work culture or whatever. But we have not been doing a lot of physical exercises. So I, uh, uh, current studies show there are two main types of exercises. Aerobics, uh, more to uh, push your uh, cardiovascular activity and uh, resistance training, weight training. And they have different effects on the brain. Um, so studies show that they also impact the frontal areas that deal with attention and executive functioning 
so i have indicated before uh, executive functioning is this many important functions that allow us to have self control to stop unintended actions and uh, things of that type so now there is a developing interest in in a branch uh, called uh, uh, cognitive science of sport so uh, a lot of people are interested in tracking uh, people who do this exercises and the changes in the brain so my point is that it also has an effect on the same systems of the brain uh, uh that um, meditation but i'm not saying that the effect of meditation and and aerobics and uh, resistance training on the exact brain networks will be similar so we are going to do more deeper comparative analysis that's not the point now but they do help i was talking about vr virtual reality it's a simulation of the of of of, of the real world and there are many you know head gears you can wear uh i have some in my lab but now it's closed it's uh, uh, in hyderabad university so how does that can help so studies have shown that if you put, put the vr and stay in some kind of a natural environment not the games of the concrete uh, environment then it has an effect on the attention that's a very nice thing so it can work indoors because you don't have to go to a park and it has been shown to be very very uh, helpful for uh, uh, elderly patients who really cannot uh, walk and go to the park so uh, vr is a good thing uh, for your brain uh, if you use uh, the right environment and uh, because it's immersive so it and uh, vr is going to be there tomorrow uh, tomorrow's world all these gadgets are going to be uh, integrated with vr your most smartphones your all kinds of stuff so you can uh the bad effect of that i'm not getting into that obviously there would be a critic somebody would say that well we did the real world natural world but i'm just saying in this moment when you are indoors you cannot really go out if you have vr uh, put some natural uh, scenery and spend half an hour and, and see if it comes you down because this is supported by research um uh, and that's uh, that's a good thing to do music Well, I didn't comment on music. The effect of music on brain, attention, mind, and stuff like that. You can go back in history, and human beings have been creating music ever since. Uh, but what is the science uh, saying? Science is saying that it, uh, it enhances focused attention. It enhances uh, your uh, mood. So there is a link between attention and mood. Uh, I'm not getting too much into that. Uh, the exact type of music, but uh, you can listen to something that you like. uh and uh, in a, in a sustained manner uh, that's critical in all these activities that if you are pulling that focused sustained attention itself during the practice then it kind of adds on it so you need to find something that allows you to uh, that kind of demands sustained attention over a period of time um, but the key point is to uh, do it uh, purposefully and in a in a in a sustained manner for some time and then probably it has the effect I refer to religion, a pretty controversial topic, but cognitive scientists are not shy away to 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 talk of religion. Religion uh, evolved uh, uh, many centuries ago. Uh, organized religions evolved a bit later and different, uh, whatever. But the key point is that if somebody is religious or a believer, then he uses his some kind of as an attention training device, or you can say that. different types of religion the impact attention on networks differently and studies have supported it um um so i am not commenting if you are not a believer or you are uh, not religious then you have no attention all i am trying to say is that if you look at relig- religious practice from a cognitive point of view then the picture changes if you look at it from a social anthropological point of view uh, then other interpretations are there so uh, i would like to believe that that uh, that really religions were the first mind collective mind training uh, practices uh, i mean take for example if you are uh, so it gives you an object of focus for long long time and naturally uh, that is the continuity uh, between religion and 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 sports and listening to music and so on and so forth But it's very difficult to say which religion gives you more attention uh, or less. It's it's not easy to say at this point in time. Of course, there are people who would outright reject, uh, like Dawkins or uh, Daniel Dennett. I mean, you can watch their uh, long debates on TV. Uh, that it's uh, meaningless. But that that is that's 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 uh, uh, 
uh, that's about belief. Um, I'm not getting into that. I'm, I'm talking about the, 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 the sustained rituals of it certainly requires attention and that's the point. Uh, so my take is that really, really uh, the uh, leaving aside the other side, the social side effects of religion, it should be seen as some kind of a uh, training ground for practice of attention. I said that learn some new skill, um, uh, some, some creative stuff. And there is in uh, uh, media reports that people are becoming more creative uh, in lockdown because they have a lot of time and less distraction. I have become also, uh, you know, I learned a new skill. Uh, I, uh, for example, how to shoot a cinematic uh, films using your smartphone. So I, I learned a few apps and kind of editing and uh, mixing and, uh, you know, a lot of stuff that I didn't know before. I did, uh, it's a pleasurable activity. Uh, here are some clips if you would like. point is that as long as you keep challenging your brain uh, it would, the neuroplasticity would happen if, if the brain is not challenged then, then, then there is no changes because it kind of habituates uh, so so uh, learning a new skill is, is pretty important uh, and it engages attention basically because you never did it before that's the point here I was commenting about communication and particularly texting because you have to know that texting is very time-consuming stuff and we learned as human beings to, to write just 4,000 years ago, but we have been speaking and listening ever since. So texting is very, very time, attention demanding now because we have less attention. So, I, so the recommendation would be not to text a lot. And texting anyway is always ambiguous you, because it's not personal. So uh, texting is problematic now. Uh, and the good point about speaking uh, on phone or video chatting is that you are maintaining the embodiedness, uh, the evolutionary tendencies that we have to be, to be uh, receiving and giving uh, auditory uh, visual cues, uh, but no texting. So testing does not offer offer that. Uh, the other uh, point related to is that we, uh, particularly after the tech evolution, everybody was hooked up to a gadget and, and uh, were not speaking to one another. You find many pictures, uh, even I find around that people are uh, sitting in a room, four or five of them, each one is hooked to their mobile phone. So the, uh, you know, so there's no attention left for, uh, you know, looking at the face or uh, speaking or listening. Everybody is hooked uh, to the phone. So. <clears throat> Uh, how to be attentive then in this situation? Well, you have to leave aside your gadget for some time. I'm not saying you leave because that's the only mode of communication available now, but you have to leave it for some time when you are speaking to uh, somebody. You can't have your attention on the mobile phone and uh, uh, speaking to somebody. So that's not going to help particularly now since, as I'm repeating myself, collectively the humanity has very little attention now because of uh, lots of issues that are going around. So we are not in normal times. Uh, so, uh, it's important to attend to one thing at a time and then, uh, and then go, uh, go with it. I have referred to uh, video games. You may be wondering, uh, you uh, may be thinking a lot of people uh, are addicted to video games. What is this recommendation? But not all games. Science, uh, scientific studies have shown that if you play some kind of action video games, they can boost attention and exit the functioning. <clears throat> primarily because they demand too much of attention and but there are uh, you know uh, side effects of that as well uh, for example in certain Asian countries the the young people are addicted to video games and uh, we know that it has not been very helpful uh, and there are negative reports as well that it doesn't really help so uh, there are two opinions on it but a uh, lot of people seem to think that if you uh, play certain kind of action video games then you can boost your attention and uh, uh, science is still exploring that possibility because many more people are uh, using uh, these uh, gadgets and devices to play uh, 
uh, video game but what kind of games they are into probably matters uh, for uh, enhancement of uh, attention and I commented on mindless browsing it would be very politically incorrect to say that uh, you know don't be on the internet or don't browse that would be nonsense but how can you browse purposefully goal direct in a goal directed manner you might have heard uh, many <coughs> media reports already that those who browse uh, or those who uh, use social media like Facebook and etc a lot uh, in an obsessive way they have a sign of depression basically because it's not goal directed is they're seeking out some kind of uh, uh, feedback that they never got from a real strong work recognition and they use social media you just don't become a Chomsky or a Harari by putting uh, like 500 uh, posts of one ideological inclination uh, and uh, you know that's mindlessness because it's not goal directed you don't have any purpose similarly browsing around I mean if, if you want to know about Second World War or if you want to know about somebody's bi like Mandela's biography then you are browsing in a purposeful manner you are going to the it's like finding the right books in the library it's not a uh, uh, you know going to a library and just coming back with whatever books uh, that are in the, in the display so purposefulness in browsing is necessary now and there is another uh, point linked to it because uh, the report said that the internet uh, might blast off I mean I hope it does uh, like uh, everybody using uh, too much uh, the quantum has increased countrywide so uh, uh, that's another thing whether it happens or not but purposeful browsing requires attention and then it trains it and it gives you satisfaction also mindless browsing mindless use of social media going on uh, you know putting stuff uh, just to receive some kind of uh, feedback uh, already people have linked them to depression to uh, insecurity and that, that then it would be more in such people who don't change their ways now so we have to be very careful uh, in, uh, in, in the use of internet and the content that we are spending time on and, and they, they need to be of a focused nature uh, um, so that would be helpful rather than mindlessly just being on internet because I cannot go out into the world and let me just keep browsing well for example if you read for example New York Times or anything that you are interested in from you know an entire article or a long article uh, like in uh, New York Review of Books or London Review of Books or anything that, that you like entire thing and it takes like 30 40 minutes and that's 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 an example of being focused on the internet and then you can go to other related articles because it's you are staying on the same topic and if you're a writer if you are a professional you can use that content and many things uh, you can do with it but if you are just mindlessly browsing whatever comes and this AI that uh, you know Google and Facebook and whatever they have put there they're feeding you with the uh, content that is uh, fitting with your ideological in inclination so you are tempted to uh, just copy paste and then and then go to engage with them so mindless browsing is going to be dangerous now because there is very little attention or uh, there is very little uh, so-called social feedback mechanism from others on which social uh, media actually rests I have been uh, referring to things that you can do to boost your attention but what you should not do I mean that's also important to know uh, one thing comes to mind straight away alcohol consumption and many uh, studies have shown that alcohol impairs a lot of cognitive functions executive functioning uh, decision making uh, uh, self of agency so on and so forth but there are other views as well that if you drink moderately uh, and so on and so forth uh, it doesn't affect I'm not getting into that but uh, <clears throat> heavy drinking uh, which uh, has, is being seen uh, now during lockdowns uh, uh, can cause more impairment so alcohol has to be either taken moderately or, uh, or, or else there is no benefit even if all these things are done because they're, they're, they're the kind of not preparing your brain to receive the, the benefits that you uh, might uh, have if you practice these skills there are some interesting uh, uh, opinions uh, both liberals and the conservatives will differ on it for example the liberals probably uh, I mean a country like India where alcohol is uh, ever since the lockdown it is banned I'm not sure in Europe and America it is banned people still can consume but uh, here there is an opinion that well uh, 
basically questioning whether it is uh, based on sound uh, medical advice or it is the conservatism of the so-called government that is in power now. I'm not getting into that. But the scientific truth of alcohol consumption and its effect on the brain is beyond uh, liberal conservative uh, you know, the divide. It does have a serious consequence for cognition and therefore the skills <coughs> that I have suggested you are going to benefit if you are uh, you know, drinking heavily uh, because uh, of uh, whatever reasons. So uh, yeah, this is not a very, uh, this is not a good uh, idea to indulge in intoxication and uh, substance abuse uh, because of the uh, uh, lockdown. There are many popular books now uh, you can read uh, on uh, attention uh, from both from psychological point of views, from neuropsychological points of views, and even from uh, the uh, you know points of views of how it is uh, being uh, <clears throat> impact because of the tech revolution. There are lots of books on uh, how the attention span is shrinking. Uh, so basically, the filtering ability, the evolutionary ability, is uh, is shrinking. But then I don't want to sound nihilistic. Uh, there are uh, are suggestions that if Attention evolved at one point in time to allow us to, uh, uh, you know, uh, hunt f uh, faster or to p focus on the enemy better or to do this and that. Uh, then its purpose now is something else because the world has changed. And there is also a possibility that uh, although we cannot avoid being on the internet, we cannot avoid uh, this and that. Uh, the, uh, the brain would adapt to the demands of attention, but in whom it would adapt to what extent is uh, not known. So th there are two extreme uh, views. Uh, one is that we live in a world that is distracted and uh, we just don't have attention for anything. And the other view is that it's okay because we will uh, evolve to find our ways out and evolution always uh, has preferred the traits that have, have been important for our future survival. So attention is important, there is no doubt about that and it is important more so even now when, as I have said uh, before, uh, the interface, uh, the habitual interface with the, the world and the people is missing. So finally, the, the take home message is that you do some of these exercises that I uh, put in the last video and they're going to be certainly helpful. If you have never done, you can try. Uh, if you have been a professional, you can uh, grow more. That's that's an important point. So writers are writing more in the solitude. They're not thinking uh, about the lockdown outside. Artists are painting more. Of course, everybody is facing some problem. Um, it's for everyone. But then the creative uh, people, they can use this time to produce uh, a lot of, um, or learn new, uh, or take their, uh, take their uh, skills to another level. So uh, that way you can enhance your attention also. So a lot of people are using this in their own ways. And those who are actually uh, more into mind wandering, mindless browsing, uh, and activities of an unfocused nature, I doubt that they're going to pick up anything uh, when things have become bad. So uh, the recommendation could be that they have to first, first inhibit those tendencies and then come back to, you know, uh, to a new skill uh, or a task. So I hope that uh, uh, my uh, comments will be helpful to you and whatever uh, I, I put here would uh, give you some new uh, ideas. And uh, uh, well, uh, if, you, uh, if you want more content of this type or some other topic, you can suggest me anything related to mind, brain, cognition, society. Uh, I'd be happy to, uh, to, uh, to indulge with that if you if you uh, uh, like uh, so far you have liked then uh, you can subscribe so that you can uh, i fumble a bit because it's a lot of self-advertising but nevertheless you can subscribe so that i know okay, there are some sort of people who are going to at least uh, you know see this and that kind of helps so i wish you a very uh, uh i would say pleasant constructive creative uh lockdown period when social distancing is on and it's going to stay uh, and spend your time uh, as beautifully as you can. Thank you.